Today in Awesome Stories, we are going to talk about a sci-fi thriller film called Children of Men. Spoilers ahead. We start hearing the England news talking about the army occupation of Muslim mosques, the closed border, and the deportation of illegal immigrants. The world is stunned by the death of Diego Ricardo, the youngest person on the planet, who died stabbed outside a bar after refusing to sign an autograph. While the group of clients attentively watch the news, a man buys a black coffee without giving any importance to the grieving people around him. The man stops to put some alcohol into the coffee when a bomb goes off in the coffee shop, causing the people around to scream scared. Theo Farron is a lowly government bureaucrat working at the Ministry of Energy. Going to his desk, he sees people crying while watching the memoriam of the recently deceased celebrity. Throughout his life, Diego was a reminder of the 18 years of infertility that humanity has endured and its effect upon the world. Trying to skip work, Theo tells his boss he'll be taking the day off to mourn Diego's death. He takes the bus home and gets startled by protesters throwing objects at it. Getting off the bus, Theo sees groups of illegal immigrants in cages waiting to be deported. He meets his old friend Jasper in a parking lot and they drive away to Jasper's house. Jasper asks him about the bombing and is grateful that he's alive. They see a bus of illegal immigrants going to the border and Jasper doesn't seem happy they are being deported. They stop on the side of the road and open a path covered by bushes, allowing them to drive to a house in the middle of the woods. Theo meets Janice, Jasper's wife, who's paralyzed and is not able to communicate anymore. Jasper discusses how the government started distributing suicide kits and antidepressants, but still makes marijuana illegal. Jasper lights up a joint and passes to Theo, prompting him to talk about how the government is secretly developing the cure for infertility. In the morning, Theo wakes up to a commercial of suicide medication promising to be more effective than the one made by the government. Walking in the street, he sees a line of police officers protecting the immigrant cages from protesters. Leaving the place, two men approach him from behind and force him into a van. In a room covered with newspapers, the men tell him they are the Fishers, an organization in war with the British government until they recognize equal rights for the immigrants in the country. One of the men takes the bag over his head and he sees his ex-wife, Julian, who appears to be the leader of the organization. Theo blames them for blowing up the coffee shop but they deny it, accusing the government of plotting the attack. 20 years ago, Theo used to be one of the members, but decided to quit after their son died. Julian asks him to help her get transit papers for a female refugee, allowing her to pass security checkpoints on the border. Theo agrees to talk with his cousin, who's responsible for the Ark of the Arts, a place to safeguard the historical pieces of art in the country. On his way back, the men threaten to kill him if he says something about the meeting and drop him off on the street. Passing through the crowds of poor people walking the streets and religious fanatics preaching for the end of the world, he passes through a gate guarded by the army. Going through the street, he sees groups of people enjoying the day and luxuries provided by the government. He enters a secure building and is taken to meet his cousin, the Minister of Art. During dinner, Theo lies and asks his cousin for transit papers for a girl he's seriously dating, making it possible for them to visit her sick brother. Theo meets one of the Fisher's men, Luke, at a bar and tells him he got the papers, but he would have to escort her. He watches a dog race when an old woman looking for her dog talks to him. Theo follows her into a bus and she leads her into Julian, who's waiting for him. Julian remembers about their dead son and how he used to have Theo's eyes, making it difficult to look at him. They start arguing about how Julian moved on with her life so quickly, but she decides to get out of the bus. Theo follows her and asks what's gonna happen to them after the job and she kisses him with uncertainty. They meet Luke and enter a car to take them into the first checkpoint where he meets Miriam and Key, the girl he's supposed to escort. Theo is woken up as they get closer to the checkpoint and they accuse him of snoring during the trip. Julian reminisces when Theo was an activist like them and once spiked the drink of two police officers to not be thrown out of their squad. Suddenly, a car on fire is pushed into the middle of the road and a group of thieves rush the car trying to rob them, breaking the windows and throwing cocktail molotovs at the car. A motorcycle pursues them and shoots at the window, hitting Julian in the neck. As Julian's bleeding out, they see a row of police cars rushing to the border. One of the police cars follow them and tell them to stop on the side of the road. Two police officers get out of the car and Luke shoots them both dead. 
the two women pray over Julian's body, while Theo gets away from the scene to cry alone in the woods. They drive to one of the Fisher's compounds as they prepare to elect a new leader for the organization. After changing his clothes, Theo is accompanied by a man responsible for watching him. The Fisher members elect Luke as their leader and Theo is called to the barn to talk with Key. Theo wants to return to London, but Key undresses her showing that she's pregnant, making her the first woman who can have a baby in 18 years. The police are searching for the four remaining suspects, making it just a matter of time for them to identify the group, including Theo. The activists discuss how they should safeguard the girl, taking her out of the country or keeping her inside the compound. Theo suggests they make the pregnancy public, but they don't think that the government will acknowledge the first human birth in 18 years from an illegal refugee. He insists on going to the Human Project, a secretive scientific group in the Azores dedicated to curing humanity's infertility. Because the group can get to a resolution, Key decides to have a baby in a secure location and go to the Human Project once he's safe. At night, Theo hears a scuffle outside his window and sees two activists that just arrived on a motorcycle. He goes downstairs and hears Luke accusing the men of disrupting the plan, but they had no choice since one of them was shot by the police. He hears the men talking by the window and finds out that Luke was responsible for Julian's death. Luke paid a gang to rob them and allowed one of the activists on the motorcycle to shoot her. Luke tells the activist that because of what he did, the uprising is guaranteed since the baby will stay with them. Theo hears them saying they will kill him on the next day and prevent Key from leaving the organization. He goes to Key's bedroom while she's sleeping with Miriam and tells what he heard from Luke. Key and Miriam decide to run away with him and they go downstairs to steal one of the cars. Theo takes the keys from other cars and starts pushing the car in front since it won't start. The men see them trying to escape and they start pursuing the car. One of the men reaches the car but he's not able to shoot since Key's inside. Theo hits him with the door and they get to the street but the car still doesn't work. He pushes the car until Miriam jump starts it and they run away from the compound while the activists pursue them. Trying to find a place to hide, he drives to Jasper's house. At his house, he sees Jasper lying on a chair and Theo moves his hair thinking he's dead. Jasper wakes up and he introduces them to his companions, presenting him to the pregnant girl. Jasper cooks them dinner and seems excited with the possibility of a newborn child, promising food and shelter until they can leave to the human project. Jasper arrives at the house from a drive and tells them about the plan to get out of the country. He made a deal with a corrupt border guard who can get them to a boat from a refugee camp. At night, Jasper tells the girl how Theo and Julian met, had a child and how the child died from a flu pandemic. Theo wakes up to the sounds of bells ringing and Jasper tells him that someone is breaking in. The group runs to the car, but Jasper refuses to go and promises to stall the intruders until they are in a safe place. Jasper takes a box with poison to his wife and gives it to her in a glass of water. Theo gets out of the car and observes from afar as the Fisher members enter the house and ask Jasper to give up the location. As Jasper refuses to give up the location, Luke starts shooting him and ends up killing him. Shocked for losing his friend, Theo goes back to the car and they continue traveling. He wakes up in the morning outside a children's school and meets Miriam inside while Key plays on a swing. Miriam remembers when pregnant women started to miscarry their baby and how she misses a world with children. Theo hears a noise outside and meets the border guard giving him the secret code that Jasper uses. He transports them to the border, but when they arrive, he starts having some minor contractions inside the car. The guard leads them to a bus and they infiltrate the immigrants being transported to a refugee camp. On the bus, Theo discovers that Miriam has no way to contact the human project, leaving him worried. Key starts to have stronger and frequent contractions, making Miriam scared because it's still not time for the baby to be born. When they enter the refugee camp, Key's water breaks and she starts having contraction pains. The guards enter the bus and they take Miriam away as she's trying to distract them. As they leave the bus, a guard steals Theo's watch, separating him from Key. Theo tries to catch up to her, but he almost loses her in the crowd. He finds her and scares some harassers off of her. Theo finds a woman, Marichka, below a warrior statue and she takes them to a safe place. As Key is about to give birth, he pushes Marichka out of the room and he prepares her to push out the baby. He washes his hands with whiskey and in a lot of pain, Key pushes out the baby. 
She asks how the baby is and he tells her that it's a little girl. In the morning, they wake up to a man knocking at the door and Theo goes to open it while hiding the baby. The man tells them that someone bombed the fence letting a few of the refugees out and probably some of the fishers got in. The little dog barks at Key and the man asks her what she's hiding under the blanket. He looks under the blanket and it's startled to see the baby. Theo helps Key to get up but Marichka doesn't want them to go with him since he's a bad man. The man takes out a gun and gives a warning shot, threatening them to go with him. While they walk down the stairs, the man tells them he saw the couple on TV and they have a big reward on their heads. When he's talking, Marichka attacks him, giving Theo the opportunity to grab his gun. Marichka attacks him with a piece of wood allowing the couple to escape running through the hallway. While the man is down on the floor, Theo helps the women go through the door. The man gets up and starts shooting, but Theo closes the door avoiding getting hit. When the man tries to go through the door, Theo hits him on the head with a car battery, killing him. Marichka leads them to a rowboat, passing Throg a crowd of armed Muslim protesters chanting on the streets. They enter an abandoned bank and they are welcomed by the people inside. While the women are entertained by the baby, Theo sees a fisher group watching the army walking the streets. Trying to get to the rowboat, they leave the bank and hide trying to avoid being seen by the army or the fishers who are fighting each other. Suddenly, a group of fishers surround him, being accompanied by their leader Luke. Luke goes to Key and tells her that she will be safe with them, but she spits on his face. Luke takes Key away from them and orders the others to kill Theo and his group after Key's out of sight. Suddenly, the army appears and starts fighting the fishers, allowing Theo to escape with Marichka. Trying to get to Key's location, he follows Luke's path, but he's pushed into a bus by Luke's men. Luke's group tries to escape from the army with Key, but they are cornered into a building. The army shows up with tanks in front of the building and starts shooting and killing the people inside. Stumbling through the corpses, he enters the building and starts going upstairs looking for Key and the baby. While looking through the rooms, he avoids the fissures and the bullets from the army. When going upstairs, he hears the baby crying and follows the sound. As he looks for the baby, the people look outside of their doors astonished for the baby's cry. Theo spots Key and the baby on a corner while Luke fights the army. When Theo tries to help her, Luke points the gun at them and says that they need the baby for the uprising. Once Luke goes to fire at the army, he takes Key out of the room, but Luke shoots at him. After protecting Key from tanks shooting at the building, he takes her through the hallway while people extend their hand to touch the baby. As the army reaches them, they cease fire as soon they hear the baby crying, allowing them to leave the building. The soldiers stare at them, smiling seeing a newborn baby. Suddenly, a missile is thrown off the building, prompting the soldiers to shoot back at the fishers and allowing the couple to escape. Getting to the rowboat, they leave Marichka behind with her dog and navigate to the boy where they're supposed to meet the boat going to the human project. As they wait for the boat, they see two British fighter jets dropping bombs in the city. He notices blood on the rowboat's floor and Theo reveals he was shot by Luke, fatally wounding him. As Theo's dying, she tells him the baby's name is Dylan, after Julian's and his lost son. He looks around and sees the boat coming to rescue them as she sings to her newborn daughter. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like. It really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.